In this video, we're going to discuss gas mixtures. Now, the gases that we've talked about at this point have all been composed of a single molecule or a single type of particle. But what happens when you have the scenario like we have in this figure here, where instead of having a single gas particle, we have three different um, identities of gases that are all in the same mixture in the same container. So here we have three different gases that I've labeled A, B, and C. And they're all in a mixture in the same container, all bouncing around at the same time. How do we treat this type of scenario where each gas has its own identity, is going to have its own uh, molecular makeup, right? Um, we're going to have to treat it a little bit differently than we treat a gas with one single identity. And we use something called Dalton's Law in order to treat this type of scenario. So Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. Dalton's law. So what Dalton's law says is that every single gas or the total pressure uh, inside this container is just going to be the sum of each of the individual partial pressures that the gas, each individual gas would exert on its own in a container of the same size. So basically every single gas is going to have its own pressure that it would exert if there was nothing else in the container. And the total pressure is just going to be a sum of each of those contributions. So we can write that out as an equation. So we have the total pressure. So I'll have P total here. And that's just going to be equal to the sum of each of the individual partial pressures for each one of these gases. So for, um, so for particle A, right, gas A, it'll have a partial pressure component, right? And for B, it will have its own contribution, right? So PB and the gas C will have its own partial pressure contribution, PC, right? And when you sum up each of these individual partial pressures, you get the total pressure inside the container. Uh, so this will be for this specific case of three different gases, A, B, and C, they would each exert their own partial pressure. You sum all of those up and you get the total pressure. Now we can write this out in a general case, right? So if we want to write out the general case for this, we will have P total is going to be equal to the sum, right? So this big sigma notation of all of the individual partial pressure. So I'm using the subscript I. I is just however many gases we have in the container, whether it's two, whether it's three, or whether it's 500, right? It's just going to be a sum of each of those individual partial pressures that make up the system. Now, um, everything I've said at this point is general enough uh, that we don't have to um, make any assumptions about the model for the gas that we're using. So we haven't said whether it's an ideal gas or any other type of gas. All we've noted here is that uh, we're assuming that each of them will have their own pressure equation. We can solve for that pressure in some way and sum them up to get the total. But let's make the assumption that we uh, have an ideal gas here, right? So I do want to label this guy as the general case, right? So the, the one up top is for just three molecules. This is for our general case for uh, any number of, ga of gas particles that could make up the mixture. So let's assume an ideal gas. So if we assume ideal, if we assume ideal, then we can actually write out an expression for each one of these partial pressures, right? So let's start with PA, right? So PA would just be equal to however, uh, however much you have of that gas, so the number of moles of A, right? R is going to be constant, right? Uh, the temperature is going to be the same for each one of these gases, and the volume as well, right? So this is more or less another piece of Dalton's law, right? It's saying Dalton's law says that it's the partial pressure is the pressure that that gas would exert if it was in a container of the same size by itself. So that volume is gonna be consistent through all of these, right? So let's write out the expression for PB, right? So PB would be equal to NB RT over V. Right? Again, the same uh, container, the same size and temperature. 
And then for PC, right, that's just going to be the number of moles of C, RT, over volume, right? So we have each of these individual partial pressures uh, for each gas in our container, right? PA, PB, and PC, right? So if we wanted to write out the total, right? So let's uh, write out the total pressure. So I'll put that over here. So if we wanted to get the total pressure in this case, then we'll have P total is going to be equal to uh, the sum of each of these uh, terms here, right? So the term for PA, right, is going to be NA RT over V, right, plus the term for B, right, so plus NB RT over V, and then the term for C, right, so plus NC RT over V. Okay, so now that we have this expression for n total, we notice that there's a lot in common here, like a term that we can factor out, right? The only thing that's different in each one of these terms is the number of moles, right? So we can actually factor out RT over V and then just be left with that sum of the number of moles, right? So if we're getting P total, right? So we'll have a sum of the number of moles. So we'll have NA, plus NB, plus NC, right? And then the RT over V term is common amongst all of them, right? So we just basically factor out RT over V and left with that total sum, right? So that's going to be our total pressure, right? So, um, so this is how you can solve for the total pressure um, using Dalton's law of partial pressures, right? You have each of these individual contributions that you can sum up to get the total pressure. Now, again, we can write this in a general case, right? So P total would just be equal to the sum of the number of moles, right, times RT over V. Right, so again, this is our general case. Right, so that gives us the, the total pressure um, in a general case using Dalton's law specifically for an ideal gas. Now, one more component that you need to be familiar with uh, for gas mixtures is a concept of the mole fraction. So the mole fraction, uh, we use the Greek letter chi to denote the mole fraction. So let's say we have the mole fraction of a component A. All the mole fraction is is just a ratio of the number of moles of A over the total number of moles, right? So this is your mole fraction. Right, now why is this important? So it's actually related to the partial pressure or you can actually calculate the partial pressure using the mole fraction, right? So if we um, use the mole fraction here, we can say that the partial pressure of A is equal to the mole fraction of A times the total pressure, right? So that guy is going to be related uh, to the partial pressure. You can get the partial pressure from the total pressure in the container and however much uh, of that gas you actually have given the mole fraction. Right. OK, so let's go through an example problem to put this to work. So um, this example says a gas mixture consists of 320 milligrams of methane, 175 milligrams of argon and 225 milligrams of neon. The partial pressure of neon at 300 Kelvin is 8.87 kilopascals. Calculate a the volume and b the total pressure of the gas, right? So we want to calculate the volume and the total pressure. So I'll go ahead and, and say out front that I'm going to use the following gas constant when using these, when doing these calculations. So the R that I'm going to use is 0 0.0821, and that's in units liter, 
ATM per mole per Kelvin, right? So that's the gas constant that I'm going to use. So the first thing that we want to do here is convert all of these masses to moles, right? So the first step that we're going to do is convert to moles. Right, so uh, for methane, we're given 320 milligrams. If we convert that to grams, that's 0.32, right? So we have 0.32 grams of methane, CH4, right? And the molar mass of methane is 16.04. So we got 16.04 grams of methane in one mole of methane. And when you uh, crank through that calculation, you get 0 0.02 moles for CH4, for methane. Uh, for argon, right, we're given 175 milligrams of argon, so that's going to be 0 0.175 grams of argon. Molar mass of argon is 39.95. So we got 39.95 grams of argon in one mole of argon. And when you crank through that, you get 0 0.004 moles. And the last one, uh, neon, we have 225 milligrams. So that's going to be 0 0.225 grams of neon. Molar mass of neon is 20.18 grams of neon in one mole of neon. And so that's going to give us 0 0.011 moles of neon. Right, so we got the number of moles for each one of our substances that we're dealing with here. Right, so this was just converting uh, the masses that we have to the number of moles, right? Um, the last thing that I want to do in order to be compatible with this gas constant, I want to convert the pressure from kilopascals to ATM. So this partial pressure of neon, so I'm going to put pressure and in the subscript I'll write the atomic symbol for neon. So that's going to be the partial pressure of neon is 8.87 kilopascals. I'm going to convert that to ATM. So when we do that, we get 0 0.0875. ATM. All right, so now we actually have everything we need to solve part A. Part A is asking us for the volume. Now keep in mind, if we have the partial pressure, that partial pressure, according to Dar Dalton's law, is the pressure that it would exert in a container of the same size. So we can use that partial pressure to get the volume. So if we're solving part A, we want to use the partial pressure of neon to solve for the volume. All right, so let's do that. So we have the partial pressure of neon. If we're assuming ideal gas here, right, that's when we multiply by the volume, that should be equal to the number of moles of neon times RT, right? So now all we have to do here is just do some algebra to isolate the volume, right? So we're going to have the volume is equal to number of moles of neon times RT over the partial pressure of neon, right? So now we just have to plug everything back in. So I'm gonna go up here so I have some room. So the volume is going to be equal to, when we plug everything in, right, we got zero, for neon, we got 0 0.011 moles, right, times the gas constant, 0 0.0821 liter ATM per mole per Kelvin. And the temperature is 300 Kelvin, right? That was given to us in the problem. Over our partial pressure for neon, uh, which we just converted to ATM, so 0 0.0875 ATM. Okay, so uh, anytime you plug in these numbers, you want to check your units to make sure that everything checks out, right? So 
Moles cancels out right there, right? So that cancels. ATM cancels here. Kelvin cancels out right there with the temperature. So um, we're only left with liters left over, which makes sense since we're trying to solve for a volume. So we can go ahead and crank through those numbers and we get a volume of 3.1 liters. All right, so that's the answer for part A. We get a volume of 3.1 liters, and the only thing we really needed was the number of moles, uh, to calculate was the number of moles of neon to plug back in to get the volume, right? So now for part B. Now, you might be thinking, okay, well, now that we have that volume, we can just plug everything, uh, we can just plug in the number of moles for each one of these guys for CH4 and argon to get their partial pressures, and then we can sum those up to get the total pressures. And you're 100% correct if you think that. But there's another way that we can do this. So let me go back to the previous slide and point out an equation to you, right? Uh, point out, highlight this guy, right? This total pressure. Right, this equation, we can use this equation in order to solve for the total pressure without solving each one of the individual partial pressures. Right, um, all we have to do is just plug in the number of moles, which we already have, and calculate the total pressure. Right, so let's do it that way. Right, so using that equation, right, so let me switch back to my white here. So, uh, using that equation, right, where we have P total equal to the sum of the number of moles times RT over V, right? Now that we have the volume, we can go ahead and just plug in here, right? So P total would just be equal to the number of moles of CH4 plus the number of moles, not capital N, switch to eraser okay so the number of moles of argon plus the number of moles of neon times RT over V right so uh, when you plug in all of those numbers right we have all of each of these right so the number of moles of CH4 0.02 Number of moles of argon, 0.004. Number of moles of neon, 0.011. Plug all of those in, you get a final pressure of 0 0.278 atm. All right, so that's the answer for part B. So this is the answer for part B, the total pressure of the mixture. This was the answer for part A, the volume, uh, the total volume of the container. Okay, so that's Dalton's law of partial pressure in action. Um, that's how we're going to treat gas mixtures. Most of the questions that you'll solve using this um, usually assume an ideal gas. Uh, but when we start to talk about real gas equations, we'll talk about how that uh, can be brought in to treat gas mixtures as well.